In this video, we're gonna cover two very important examples. One is gonna be an example of a good reference and the other is an example of a bad reference. So let's get started. So we've talked about inferences as basically projecting a statistic onto a parameter. Basically saying, I have this sample, I have some information about that sample, and I'm gonna use that information to project onto a population and say, now I have information about the population. So a good inference is made when the sample represents the population. So if I have a good sample that represents the population, then again, my statistic is a good representation of my parameter. That just means a good sample means a good inference. A bad inference is made when the sample does not represent the population. So maybe you're biased somehow, or maybe you collected a group that does not actually represent the population that you're trying to understand. So let's go through an example. In this example, we're gonna use the population to be US citizens. Our sample is going to be 1,000 citizens in California. Now right off the bat, we have a location bias, which we'll maybe talk about later on, but we're picking specifically 1,000 people in California. So the question is, do these 1,000 people actually represent the population of the United States, the, the group of US citizens? Well, let's take a look at what we're analyzing first. So when we measure this sample of 1,000 people in California, we found that 49% of the 1,000 citizens in California claim to be Christian. So the question that we should ask is, does this sample represent the population of all US citizens? So let's say I make an inference here. In this case, my inference would be that 49% of US citizens are self-proclaimed Christians. So that's basically me taking my statistic, the fact about the 1,000 Californians, and projecting that to all US citizens. So this is an example of an inference. So it turns out that the actual parameter is around 75%. Basically 75% of citizens in the US are self-proclaimed Christians. Now, notice I italicize a word there, around. The reason is because we actually don't know what the true parameter is. I actually have no idea how much percent of US citizens are self-proclaimed Christians. But there have been really good studies involving large samples that are not biased, especially regarding location, that have found that around 75% of US citizens are self-proclaimed Christians. So in this case, this is the parameter. Now we have to ask a really important question with this example. Why is the inference so different from the actual truth. So again, the inference was that 49% of US citizens are self-proclaimed Christians, but I'm claiming that the parameter is around 75%. Those two numbers are very different. Why? The primary reason is because my sample is not a good representation of the population. I'm sampling Californians, which means I'm immediately biased. I'm biased in so many ways, location, um, political affiliation. There are so many things involved in this sample that will skew my statistic to be very different from the true parameter. Let's do another example. In this case, I'm gonna take the same population. It's gonna be US citizens. My sample is going to be 1,000 citizens randomly chosen around the US. Now, what that means is a very, very tricky question we'll talk about later throughout this course but let's say I just picked 1,000 citizens completely randomly. Now here's a statistic. 72% of those 1,000 citizens claim to be Christian. So I can take that 72% and project it onto the population and claim that 72% of the US is self-proclaimed Christian. That would be known as an inference. Now let's bring back that parameter that we talked about earlier. Remember that around 75% of US citizens happen to be self-proclaimed Christians. So the question is, am I wrong? Or is this wrong, this fact that 75% of US citizens are self-proclaimed Christians? Well, at this point, it's actually really hard to say because nobody actually really knows what the parameter is. 
It turns out it could be really close to 72%. The actual parameter could be 40%. Who knows? Because really we have to, we, we could be biased. We could be selecting a, a group that's coincidentally self-proclaimed Christian every single time that happens. And we'll talk about that later on in this course. But it's important to understand that we're actually closer to the truth because our sample is representative of the population. So I want you to really reflect on this. This time my, our inference was really good. Why was it good? What made it good? The real reason is because my sample was representative of the population. My sample, if I looked at that 1,000 people, I would say, yeah, that's basically America in a nutshell. And if I can do that, then I can analyze it and pretend like it's America. And I get information about America without surveying or observing or experimenting on all Americans. Anyways, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture. You just watched a video from Amore Learning. We provide free math videos, and we offer many online courses. We also provide free math tutoring via YouTube Live every Thursday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video to get access to all of our free content. And put a comment in the comment section if you have any math questions. Check out all of our courses on amorelearning.org.